Hello friends, we all love climbing, right? But let's be honest, it's not exactly a desk job. Things happen, and in case of an emergency, you gotta have an action plan. That's what we're gonna talk about next. Let's go. All right, folks, we need to talk. We all wanna go home at the end of the day and to make sure we do, we need to be serious about safety. Joining me today is Brandon Foster, Director of Safety and Field Operations for Vicor. Brandon, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. When we're out in the field, we all try to be your brother's keeper and look out for each other. In addition to that, you still need to have an emergency action plan. What do the people need to know about that? Yeah, that plan is critical. First off, we need to know who's on our team, what roles they're capable of playing, what their limitations might be in playing those roles. We gotta know where our first aid kit is, what's inside of it, how to use it, if we wanna bring everyone home safe. The kind of care you provide can make a big difference when you're saving a life. And what situations would require immediate medical treatment? Yeah, it is all about preservation of life. On the tower, there's only a handful of things that you're gonna give the best care for. Airway obstruction, so breathing issues, things like anaphylactic shock, diabetic emergencies or sudden illnesses, things of that nature, and severe bleeding. Anything else can pretty much be handled on the ground, but you wanna make sure that if you don't have certain things in your kit and your guys might need them, like an EpiPen or an inhaler, that those are things they make aware to you and your crew so you know where to find them. Have you ever been in a situation where you needed to provide emergency care? Unfortunately, yes. And what I found out that day is that your standard ANSI first aid kit is not adequate for traumatic injuries. They have different classes of yep. first aid kits, yep. uh, class B and stuff like that. What, what do you have your crews carry Yeah, around? so we, the one that we use is actually a fracking and all-terrain uh, kit, if you will. So it's mostly waterproof. Everything that comes inside of it is sealed so that if you are out in the elements for whatever reason, things aren't getting damaged. And it is also considered a trauma kit. So it's a level three kit and a type B kit much different than just a boo-boo yeah. a box. For sure, for you know? sure. You think everything's just gonna be a little slice with your, your pocket yeah. knife or something, and then something major happens right. and you realize you need a lot more. All of a sudden you feel real ill-prepared when you bust open that kit if you don't have the tools you need. That's a very true fact. Yeah. Earlier you mentioned a few things you should have in a first aid kit. Let's talk about that. Yeah, not all kits are created equal first off. You need to explore the scenarios that you're gonna put your workers into. They need to go look at the kits and figure out what the right one is to make sure that they have the tools to come home safely. All right, here we go. Let's bust open our bag. What do we got in here? Fractures and severe sprains. Yep. It's dandy right there. Yep. That's, that's a good, a good one, Sean. One. Yep. I don't know if you've seen that before, but that's a, that's a nice little kit right there. Burn sheet. Major burn it. treatment. Yep. CPR and shock treatment. Really easy one to use. Everything's like I said, sealed up. Really like that about it. All of them also come with like directions on there and a description of what's in there. More minor burns. We got burns covered. Same old cold packs. What else we got? Snake bite. Snake bite. That's more Very your, that's your region, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> Some nice medical shears. What else we got down here? Triangular bandage. What else we got? Some gloves. First line of defense against bloodborne pathogens. Got some EpiPens. Yeah, I'm with the EpiPen. Blue to the sky, orange to the thigh. Press and hold. Hear the click, count down, administer the full dose. This we got our uh, naloxone kit, opioid overdose, AED, automated external defibrillator. Automated, it's going to talk to us. Press pads firmly to patient's bare skin. Shock advised, state shock delivered. Be sure emergency medical services have been called. What's the proper protocol in an emergency? Oh, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do, Sean, is call for help. Get some people on the way. The more hands, the better. 
Next thing we want to do is try and get that person to the care team to provide whatever care is necessary. Uh, and that's mostly going to happen on the ground unless one of those other scenarios that I called out on the tower would take place. Once you've got that person cared or to the ground, we want to follow through. We want to make sure we continue to provide care and stay with that person until EMS services have arrived or we're able to take them to a facility to be treated by a medical professional. Most JSAs have the list of a hospital and the address. Would you advise the crew to actually go to the hospital or call 911 and have them come to the site? Yeah, that depends on the severity of the injury, I would say. Things that are considered life-threatening, those airways, those severe bleedings, any kind of sudden illness, those are definite 911 calls. If it's a small alley, utility knife cuts and stuff like that, most of the time you can transport that person to the local clinic. Brandon, thanks so much for giving us the important overview of first aid on a job site. It's important for us to look after each other, but also be ready in case something happens. That's all from here. Thanks for watching and stay safe.